everyone. Welcome back to our lecture. Today we'll be talking about CSS. If you remember, if you remember back in the previous vid, we talked about HTML and how to use it, and basically covered HTML from A to Z. You know everything you need to know about it. But if you remember, we weren't, we didn't have any style. So what style? How do you add style to your HTML? Well, to add style to your HTML, you need this thing called CSS. So what CSS? CSS is cascading style sheets. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, actually CSS is the thing that you use to make your stuff look good on the internet. So if your page has HTML, HTML is the text and the uh, content, and CSS is the stuff that makes that content look good. It's a pretty simple way of explaining stuff. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just uh, set up some things here. So we're how do you add style to uh, how do you add style or CSS to your page? Well, you can go in your head tag, and inside it, you can add the style tag. So here we're going to add HTML, HTML, and we're going to take a look at the first property that we're going to do. This is going to be called background. I'm going to cover HTML in a bit, but just I just want to add this to make sure that I can see. All right, so background color black, color white. So if I do this, and save that. So if I do this and save that, and actually just uh, and open the page here. All right. All right. So far, the page is open. So if we take a look at it right now, the background color is black. So how did we do this? Well, we've done this pretty simply. When we when we take a look at our code here, as you can see, we have this HTML. So what does HTML do? HTML means select everything and add to it these properties. So now everything gets a gets a black background color and a white color. So what does color white mean? Well, color white is basically the text color. So if we added the, so if we added inside here, if we added a class, or not a class, if we added just a, uh, if we added a, uh, how do I say this? Yeah, let's just add something. H1, hello and well and welcome to the next, next. What do you mean next? To this lecture. Okay, maybe I had too much coffee for the day. <laughs> All right. Alright, so so far this looks pretty good. Okay, so let's take a look at what HTML does. So HTML here basically affects everything inside your page. So everything in your page will have a dark background color or a background color of black and then white. So if we take a look at it now, as you can see, we have white text on a dark background color. Alright. Alright, so that's the first point that you want to cover. So now if I go back to our notes, now if I go back to our notes, Let's see. Let's see what we have. Thanks to Deech for writing these. For second up, we have how do we add a class? So what's a class? Well, a class is basically when you want to style something, but you don't want to style everything, only the things with that class. So here we have a div with a class of main. If you remember back in the first video, a div is used when nothing else makes sense to use. So we, here we have a div of a class of main. Actually, actually instead of instead of div, we should have main here. Yeah, if you remember back in the back in the first part of the video, we said you could you should use semantic tags whenever possible. All right, that that looks uh, that looks decent so far. Okay, so how can we basically modify stuff? Well, classes you use these to add style to specific parts of your page. So how can you add a class to your CSS? Well, it's pretty simple. You want to go on your CSS and then do dot, and then the class name. So here we have a class of main. So dot main, and then in here we're gonna give it a custom style. So what can we do? So we can give it a width. So we can give it a uh, actually let's just change. Let's give it a width of fifty percent. So it'll take only half the space of the on your screen. And then let's give it a background, a background color of blue. Let's do blue. Right. So if we do blue. Right. So if we do. Hmm, am I missing something again? All right. Okay, so far doesn't look like it. Okay, open with live. Okay, so live server. All right, so if we take a look at it right now. All right, so if we take a look at it right now, as you can see, the color is blue. This is exactly what we wanted. All right, so if you go back to our code, we've taken a look at a few things here, and we went a little fast. So let's do a recap. Firstly, we have colors. So how can you handle colors? Well, there are a few ways. One, you can just use color names like this, or you can use hex values such as hash 000, six zeros like that. 
that is a hex value and hex values are basically colors that you that you define in that way and if we take a look at the page as you can see it's black let's actually just give it a different hex value to simplify things so wait wait all right so if we do ff000 and take a look at it as you can see it's red so that's how hex values work hex values use you don't want to mess around with these too much because there are two other ways that are much much better to use colors the first is just using regular colors but the second way and my favorite method is to use rgb so what's rgb now notice the syntax with rgb it's different you do rgb and then you open parentheses this is a bit different so what do you want to put inside these parentheses well the amount of red and then the amount of green and then the amount of blue so rgb red green blue so you want to put the amount of red that you have let's give it an amount of red of 150 all right so let's give it an amount of red of 40 and then an amount of green of 80 and then an amount of blue of 40 so so we'll get a dark greenish color so that's basically how those work if we take a look at it now as you can see you get this nice greenish color that's a little gray it's a little bit gray because uh, because that's how RGB works the more the more the simil the closer the color values are so if you had 40 50 40 it would be dark gray with a very very light green accent so if we did so if we did 40 50 40 and save that and took a look at it as you can see it's it's basically gray with a very very light green accent i don't know if it's even visible or not have a have a bit of a color, have a bit of color blindness okay Okay, so that's one way of doing colors. You do the amount of green and then the amount of blue. I uh, do the amount of red and then green and then blue uh, and then blue. It's a nice method of handling colors. And then we have the last method that I wanted to talk about, and this is HSL. So what's HSL? HSL is hue, saturation, and lightness. So what does that basically mean? Well, hue, saturation, lightness. Hue, saturation, lightness is uh, is a nice method. So first you have so if it's the same way you do it the same way as you do RGB so first you have the hue so what's the hue the hue is the color that you want to handle so we have 0 to 360 so 0 is red 120 is blue 120 is green sorry and 240 is blue and 360 is red again it keeps cycling over and over and over so if we did 120 which is green and then after that we have S so H means hue the hue here is 120 and then S is saturation so zero saturation would means would mean complete gray and 100% saturation would mean complete color. So if we give it 50%, make sure that you add the percentage, it's important. And then lightness. So lightness is how light the color should be. Let's give it 20%. All right, so HSL. All right, so if we do this, actually save that and take a look. We're using green too much. Let's actually just use red. Let's actually just use blue here. So so yeah, that's basically blue. So if we save that and take a look at it, as you can see, you get the exact effect that you want. All right, so if you go back to our code, let's actually change the saturation. Let's give it let's give it zero percent saturation. So if you gave it zero percent saturation, as you can see, it's gray because there's no color. That's what saturation is. All right, so so let's give it fifty percent saturation and let's change the lightness to fifty percent, for example. So if we gave it fifty percent lightness and save that and took a look at it, as you can see, you get this light blue color. So that's what the lightness does. So those are so that's how colors work. They're pretty interesting, but let's just go back. Let's just uh, go back to black. So black, right? Then after this, we have something called the CSS box model. So what's the box model about? Well, the box model is actually is actually how CSS works. So what's it about? Well, to put it simply, firstly you have the content on your page. So what's the content? The content in our case would be this text over here. Okay, that's great. That's the content okay but uh, what's the other stuff well after your content you have your padding so what's padding padding is the space between the content and the border so if we add a border here so you can add borders so you can do border and then okay now that we know that we're live and we made the ultimate mess up of all time we can go, we can back we can get back to what we're doing if I remember right you guys you guys said that it pros on border so here's what we have so we have 5px solid white so what does this do well, border basically specifies the border for, that you have for each direction. It's then that gives you a white border. Then, so that gives you a white border. And then after that, we have padding. So what's padding? Well, padding is the space inside the border. Here we have the. So why do we have it defined five times? So what does this do? Well, well the first one, padding 50px. This is the top, and then this is the right, and then this is the bottom, and then this is left. 
think of it as a clock going um, go think of it as a clock going clockwise from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock but since all directions here are since all the um, since all the places here are the same value we can just do 50 px and call it a day so if we just do 50 px and save that as you can see we get the same result now after that we have margin so what's margin about well margin is basically the space outside the border it's a pretty simple concept so if we remove, so if we remove the margin here and save that and take a look at the page as you can see right now this uh, this button looking frankenstein that we have over here is taking up uh, is is really sticking to the sides of the screen at the top but if we go back to our page here and give it a margin of 50 pixels and save that and save that and took a look at it as you can see right there it doesn't take up as much space as it used to before now the next few properties that I want to talk about are basically width and height so width is basically the width that we that you can use so width let's give it a width of 50% so 50% means half the width of its container element so if we gave it 50% and took a look at it as you can see it's only taking up 50% of the screen so that's basically how the percentages work they are they are a, they are a percentage of the parent so here we have the main class and inside and it's inside the body so the body is basically the width of the entire screen but if the body class was only 200 pixels wide, then 50% would be 100 pixels. Now let's take on a now let's take a view at the at a few other values. So we have the pixel, which is basically an interesting value. So let's give this a width of so let's give this a width of um, 600 pixels. So if we gave it 600 pixels and saved that and took a look at it, as you can see right there, it takes up basically that amount of space. But here's the interesting thing about pixels. They're more like inches and centimeters. So if we actually go into mobile mode, let's do, let me just let uh, let me just make this a bit wider so we can see it better. Okay. All right. So let me just make this a bit wider. As you can see, this is 600 pixels. As you can see at the top, it says 600 pixels. But if we but if we go but if the screen width is less than 600 pixels, this thing is going to stay at 600 pixels no matter what. It doesn't care about the screen size. So that's basically how pixels work. But if we were using a percentage here instead of pixels, here here's what it would look, here's what it would look like. So if we used 50% and took a look at it now, as you can see, about the same width, but it would always be half the width of the screen, no matter what. So if you basically, if you literally had this running on a on a refrigerator screen, it would still be half. As you can see, it starts to even glitch out at some points. So that's basically how widths work. All right, let's go to let's go back to normal mode. We have a few more. Uh, we have a few more units to take a look at. So the first unit that, so the another unit that's pretty cool is the VH. So so VH is view height. So what does view height mean? Well, it's a percentage of the of the height of your screen. So basically 50 V. So so basically 50 VH is half the height of your screen. So if we do 50 VH and save that, it's basically half the height of my screen. Right. That's basically how that works. Now we have VW. The VW is the same as VH, but basically half the width of your screen. So if we actually do, so if we actually do VW here, so if we did VW, save that and took a look at it. As you can see, it's about half the high, half the width of my screen. So that's VH and VW. There are a few other interesting units, but those are the ones that are important at the moment. Okay, so we've taken a look at the units. Now, if we go back to the notes here and just take a look at what else we want to do, so we've covered the box model, how it works, and margin, and all this stuff, and all this stuff. We've covered basically how all that stuff works. As you can see here, firstly you have the top, then right, then bottom, then left. It's basically like a clock has each uh, basically set it here. And then after that, we have inline versus block elements. So what's the difference between inline and block elements? Well, the difference is pretty simple. An inline element basically flows with the text. So, for example, let's just let's just get rid of all this for a moment. All right, let's just get rid of all this for a moment. So, right. So instead of a so so instead of that, we're gonna have a p. Hello, I am I am the lecturer with crappy internet. So so if we have so if we have this and save that. And went back to the page. It's pretty small, but it basically takes its own line. That's what block elements do. They take their own line. But a but an inline element wouldn't take its own line. It will basically flow with the text. It won't create its own block. Like for example, if you wanted to make this text bold, so for example, strong. If we did strong here, all right. So if we did strong here and and uh, did uh, basically crappy 
into your net. So if we did strong and did that and saved that and took a look at it, as you can see right there, it uh, it doesn't create its own line because you don't want uh, your bold text to just go on its own line. That's what block elements do. They go on their own line and they allow you a bit more customizability with the CSS. So here, if we actually went up here and changed the strong tag, so if we did strong to change the strong tag and made it display, block to switch between block and the inline you just do display block or display inline so if we did that and took a look at it now as you can see it, it takes its own line because its display is block the default display for a strong element is inline so it goes on the same line but when you give it display block it basically gets uh, it basically uh, it basically takes up its own line so that's the difference between inline elements and block level elements all right, great. Looks like everyone understands the difference between block elements and uh, inline elements, and there is no confusion yet, and there's no confusion there. All right, so taking a look at our notes, these will be available. These will be available soon. Okay, so we've took at units. Yeah, I forgot rem and em. These are pretty cool units. They're really cool, actually. So basically, what's rem and what's em? So if we go here and select the p tag. So if we go here and select the p tag, the m unit is basically the size. The m unit is basically the size of the font of this element. So if we give this p tag a padding of one m, let's give it twenty. Let's give it ten uh, m just to make this more obvious. So the m unit, when you use it with padding and margin, what does it do? It, it's basically the size of your font. So the default size of this font is sixteen pixels. So 10m would mean 160 pixels. It's a neat, it's a really neat way to just modify stuff when you're getting into responsive web design and that kind of thing. So if we save that and take a look at it, as you can see, the line gets padding of uh, 160 pixels from all directions. So that's basically what uh, so that's basically what m does. But rem is a bit different. Rem is the root element. Uh, rem is the root element font size. So what's the difference here? Well, m is basically the font of this element. So if this font was was 20 pixels, so if the font size was 20 pixels, then 10m would be 200. But rem is always 16, so if it was 10 rem, it would always be 160. So that's the difference between m and rem. They're pretty cool units to mess with and are pretty fun to deal with. The first challenge is to find out five elements that are inline and five elements that are block. There are five elements that have display inline and five elements that have display block. I've already helped you a bit with both, so let's see who can do finish this challenge first. Alright, I'm gonna be waiting for you and I expect the answers to be in on Discord. Alright, so so we've finished this part and we've took and we've taken a look at padding and all that stuff and the cool stuff. Alright, and we've taken a look at width and height. Width and height. Oh oh yeah, just uh keep things simple. Width and height are not uh width and height are come before padding, so they're basically part of the content. So yeah, just to keep just to keep that part in mind. Alright, so next up Next up, if we take a look at our notes, let's see what else we have. Alright, so we've already went through all these units. Alright, so we've already went through all these units. Alright, so next up we have IDs. So what's an ID? An ID is like a class, but it overrides classes because you can only ever use one ID. So if we had an ID here, so hash ID1 and gave it a padding of... Uh, Let's do 2 em. So if we gave it pa a padding of 2 em, IDs always override the regular element selectors and classes. So if we did id equals id1 on this p tag here, the padding do you think would it would be 10 em or 2 em? All right. All right. So if I save that actually and take a look and so if I save this id, all right. Let me check. So which one do you think will take precedence, the id or the regular element selector? Well, well as we talked about. The, the regular element, so, uh, the ID always takes precedence over the regular element selector and the class. Also, you usually don't want to use IDs and just stick with classes because IDs always override classes and they can cause you a headache. But let's say that you wanted to add multiple classes to a single element. How can you do that? Well, let's say that this p tag should have two classes. So let me just uh, remove all this for a moment and remove the ID. So d2f quote. So if you remove, so if you remove that stuff, how can you add two classes? So let's say dot so the class of blue background color of blue and then the class of padding which gives padding to em. Alright, so how can you add two classes to a single element? In this case the p tag. Well you can do class equals and then do this and then do the first class name and then a space and then the second class name. So that's basically how we can add multiple classes to a single element. 
So if we save that and take a look at it, as you can see, the background color of the P tag is blue and it has padding. So that's how you can add multiple classes to a single element. Wait, did I actually show the P tag? Okay, here's the P tag, just in case I didn't show it. I'm not sure if I did or not. So yeah, as you can see, it gets the blue, it gets the blue background color and it gets the padding. All right, so what do we have next up? After? So what do we have next up after this? So we have colors, background colors. You also have all this stuff. All right. All right. So we so now we have the cool stuff, which is modifying font, modifying fonts. Okay. So we have a few values for fonts, but uh, just to simplify stuff. Let me just remove these classes for a moment. All right. Let me just remove all that. So now you're gonna give it a class of Paragraph. Okay, so we're gonna give this paragraph a class of paragraph, which is a bit weird, but whatever. Okay, so if we gave it a class of paragraph and go back here and delete all this and do dot paragraph, we're gonna take a look at the few cool text. Are we gonna? We're gonna take a look at the few cool text properties there. Are. So, all right. So what are the cool? Well, the first one is line height. Line height is basically the space between the lines. Actually, actually, wait. Wait, wait. Let's just uh, add a lot of randomly generated text to make this stuff easier to explain. So, lorem. Mm, no. Lorem 5000. Because lorem 5000 is cool. Deal with it. <laughs> okay, so if we add lorem 5000 and take a look at the page, as you can see, you get a monstrous amount of text on it. This is literally the size of a, of a massive blog article. Okay. So what are the few cool properties that we have? Well, we have line height. This is the first property. So what does line height do? Well, line height is the space between two lines. So, and a great value for it is 1.5 em. You usually want to use m for this stuff. All right. So if we gave it a space of uh, if we gave it a space of 1.5 em and save that and took a look at it, there's a bit more spacing between the lines. Let's actually do something more extreme to make this a bit more obvious. So. 4.5 em. So if we gave it 4.5 em and save that, that's basically what line height does. Usually, usually a great value for line height is between 1.3 to 1.6 em. Those are great values for line height, just to make stuff look uh, spaced out and basically give it breathing room. So what's the next property on the list? All right. So the next property on the list. All right. So the next property on the list. Also, you can add comments to your CSS, so if you don't understand a bit of CSS, you can always add a comment to it like this, so line height is cool. But never comment out CSS, just never keep your code commented out because then it could uh, turn into a zombie and just to end up uh, being uncommented by accident and then your entire page breaks and you're like, why'd that happen? So that can be really, really problematic, so make sure that you avoid that. Make only use comments when you need them. Alright, so next up. So next up we have so next up we have font family. So what's font family about? Well, font family basically is selects the font families that you want to use. So we're gonna use my favorite font, Helvetica. It's probably not on my system, but Arial. Okay, yeah, these three are pretty good. So basically, what does this do? Well, font family lets you select a lets you select a bunch of fonts. So here we have Arial, Helvetica, and Sans Serif. So if we save that and take a look at it right now, as you can see. The font change. The font changed. The default font, I believe, is uh, Deja Vu Sans Mono. I believe on my system that's the default font. And then we switched it to Arial. There are two kinds of fonts. There is Sans Serif and Serif. So the Serif fonts basically have these little extra bits that you have on text, which are which are quite interesting. Basically, take a look at Times New Roman. Take a look at the Times New Roman font to understand what I'm talking about. Then we have font size. So basically, font size is a font size. Usually, so the default font size is uh, 16 pixels. Let's give it 30. Let's give it 32 pixels. So if we gave it 32, so if we gave it 32 pixels and saved that and took a look at it, as you can see, the text is larger. So that's what the pixel. So that's what the font size property does. Now we have a few other interesting. Now we have a few other interesting properties that we can take a look at. Right, so if I actually go to my notes here and take a look, okay, what uh, what else do we have? So we have font size, and then we have letter spacing. Letter spacing is basically the space between letters. So if we did letter, all right, let me remove that. So if we did letter, let letter dash space. Okay, so if we did letter spacing five pixels, if we did letter spacing five pixels and save that. Now five pixels is an insane amount of letter spacing. So if we did that, as you can see, there's a lot of space between each letter. That's basically what letter spacing does. 
Then we have word spacing and stuff like that. So word spacing is basically the same as letter spacing, but for words. And then, and then taking a look at the, and then taking a look at the notes, we have word spacing, and then, and then font weight. Font weight is basically how bold your font is. So if we did font weight bolder, so if we did bolder for font weight, you can use values from 100 to 900, or you can use bolder and bold and light and whatnot so if we I gave it bold as you can see the font here is bold it's really bold that's what uh, the font weight property does now I'm going I know I'm going over these in a quick fire fashion but don't worry about it we'll definitely we'll definitely we'll definitely do uh, questions and whatnot so next up we have font style so what does font style do it adds styles to the font it has some pretty cool stuff so let's so let's actually take a look at it so font style or uh, what do we want to add? So italic normal. Okay, let's give it italic. It's a so font style is a nice way to give fonts italic. So if we do that and take a look at it, as you can see, the font is italic. Now I know I have a ton of text here, but uh, actually, you know what? Let's just make this. Let's just give this a font size a font size of two rem or thirty two pixels. Let's just give it two rem or thirty two pixels just to make it larger so that you can see the effects that I'm talking about much better now. All right, so that's basically what uh, the font style tag does. Now we have a few interesting ones like text decoration. So what does text decoration? Well, you can add some cool stuff to it, like dash, dotted, double, line through. So for example, line through. So if we added line through to the text here and took a look at it, as you can see, there's a line that's going through all the text, which is, is a pretty cool effect. There's a ton of properties for these, but the most useful ones are font size, font family, line height, and text decoration. Those are usually the most useful ones. So, if, so if we if we take uh, another look, we have text transform. All right. So let's see what text transform can do for us. So if we take a look at it, wait, we want font size. Okay. So text trans. So if we do text transform, here we have capitalized, so we can make it all capital. You have uh, lowercase. You have uppercase. It's a pretty cool. It's a pretty cool idea. So if we add it, so if we did uppercase, now as you can see, everything is uppercase. So that's what the text transform feature does. So we ba we're basically about done here. So so how there are a few other ways to add style to your CSS. This is not the best way to add style to your CSS. Uh, this is not the best way to add style to your HTML. The best way, in my opinion, is to use link rel style sheet and a completely different file. So what does that look like? So link. So if we did link rel style sheet here, and then and then here index.css so if we made a file called index.css and saved this and then inside here made a and then made uh, index.css and then put all our CSS in here then we can use CSS like this directly and split our CSS from our HTML and still get the same result as you can see right there now I went through that part a little too fast didn't I okay so let's take a look at the link rel so as long as it's on the same file structure you can just use slash and then the file name to basically get it so you want to do so we want to open link then rel equals style sheet between these uh, between these uh, quotes and then href and then slash index dot css and then and then do slash and then close so it's a self closing tag like the br tag so that's basically how you can use uh, so that's basically how you can split your css from your html and taking a look here okay so we've taken a look at the width property the height property but let's say that we wanted to center Let's say that we wanted this column to not be as massive, and we wanted it to be centered on this, and we wanted it to be centered. So if you remember, we had a class called dot main, so we're going to give it a width of 80%. So we're going to give it a width of 80%, and after that, we're going to give it a margin of zero auto. So what does this do? Margin zero auto basically centers stuff. So if we do that and take a look at it now, as you can see, it looks much better, and it's easier to read because it's centered and it isn't as wide. Pretty close to... This is this looks pretty close to what uh, Medium has actually, but well, whatever. So that's basically how you can use margin and CSS and center stuff. Well, for today's assignment, for today's assignment, I want you to try to use the CSS properties that we've talked about, and I want you to watch a few of the design videos that I have on my channel. And basically, try to make try to make the website that you made on the first page. Try to make that one look pretty nice with the stuff that we added and the stuff that we talked about. I'm really confident that you can do it and I'm excited to actually see what you guys can do there. Anyway, I'll be on the Discord if anyone has any questions and I'll see you guys on the next lecture.